Welcome back to the show. Thank you. You always have such a really nice audience. They're so... They're wonderful. We have a line warm. of South Africans. Thank you. I heard. That's how, it, that's how it happens. Lots of good Indian food in South Africa. Yeah, we actually have tons of Indian mm -hmm. food in South Africa. We have the highest population of Indians outside of India. A lot of people don't know really? that about us. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's Gandhi us. started in South Africa. Yes, that's true. So, yeah, so a lot of people... So thank you. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> that's just uh, oh, my pleasure. Uh, <laughs> I made them all. Uh, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, season 16 of Top Chef, and this is going to be the season finale. I have to ask, when you spend every single working day eating some of the best mm -hmm. culinary delights, do you just, do you, like, is your off time junk food? Is that what you do? I mean, it's not junk food, but it's really simple food. Like, right. I just want toast, or I want chicken soup. Yes. Or mashed potatoes. So not with, like, the drizzling thing on the thing. No, yes, exactly. When you eat that much, uh, and it's not that I'm eating a lot. Right. I, I am eating a lot, but I'm eating a lot of all these different things. Yes. So then your stomach starts to feel a bit murky at the end of the day, so... When I come out of Top Chef, I just want the plainest, simplest, cleanest food, a lot of salad, right. a lot of vinegar, you know? Just something that, like, takes you away, because the food is really amazing. And I, you, you've become associated with delicious food all around the world. I mean, because of the books you've written, yeah. because of the shows that you've done. Do you have a favorite food? Is, is, like, is there something where you go, like, that is what I look forward to, or are you, are you just sick of food now? I mean... I know, I'm not sick of food. Okay. I mean, I think that's why I'm um, uniquely qualified to do my job. Right. You know, I have an endless appetite and a curiosity. And um, I genuinely like simple things like fried chicken. That's That would be a nice treat. Right. Or I would have, like, just lentils and rice. That was very boring, but it's my comfort food. Um, I just like sometimes a toast with peanut butter. I'm in that, like, weird kick now. Yes. But I have to stop eating it because pomegranate season is over. I've got a lot of... <laughs> That. You you so. <laughs> you've uh, you you've uh, created quite a stir online because you you've started this trend on your Instagram of um, just eating food, dare I say, extremely seductively. Um, <laughs> oh no no you judge me. Watch the video and then you t watch. Here's here's one of the videos and you tell me what you think. Okay. Yes, very seductive. <laughs> that's... That, and th that's, that's ASMR. That's what that is, right? Well, you know, it's interesting because I was online and we stumbled on it and I thought, is this really true? And you see these people opening and closing bags. Or yes, just making sounds. Or, or eating right. fried chicken. And like I said, I was... I have been on this pomegranate toast kick and... You know, it's very crunchy. We started it because I was too busy to have a proper lunch and I made a quick sandwich. And I was sitting at a table and someone in my office just filmed me doing it. And then... That you know, person's creepy, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> She's young and very innovative. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, like, we just... We didn't even put it on the feed. We put it on, in stories and it just... People were really entranced by it. I mean, I think... One of the reasons, one of the many reasons people like Top Chef is because they like to watch the eating. They like Definitely. to live vicariously yes. through me and Tom and Gail and, and Graham. So I think that has a lot to do with it. I just don't understand the rest of it, but I don't... <laughs> I think it's funny. I really do. I mean, I think also people recognize my voice. Like, sometimes I'll be in a restaurant with someone behind me and they won't have seen me, but they'll hear my voice, especially ordering, and they're used to me talking about food. I can imagine. In a very specific, elaborate, you know, way. Do, do, you, do you throw people off in restaurants? Like, do you, do you feel the hustle and bustle change when you walk in? Because I would be intimidated if I was a chef or worked in a restaurant, and then Padma Lakshmi walks in, and I'll just be like, it's a test, it's a test, it's a test. <laughs> do, you, do you feel that, or is no. everyone just like... The, the... No, I mean, I, I, I get treated very well, as you would expect, at right. restaurants, and... You know, usually they know I'm coming, but I don't... I don't... Because I'm not judging them. You know, I'm in their restaurant. Yes. What is hard, and I know it's a high-class problem, but is that they send a bunch of things from the kitchen, like little gifts... That you didn't order. That I didn't order. Uh, compl and, compliments of the chef. That's yeah, what they say. which is really nice, except now I feel, you know, I have to eat it because I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, and I really did want to eat light, especially if I've just come off Top Chef, Right. You know? 
But as you, I you said, should make it yeah. instead of instead of feeling bad and eating it. If you don't want to eat it, you should just pull like a judgy move. So you should get the food and then be like, I like your presentation, but I feel like <laughs> the display doesn't match the flavors <laughs> and the. Or just do something like that, the and they'll be like, we. Plating doesn't yes, warrant a it, taste. You see, the yeah. plating <laughs> doesn't warrant a taste, exactly. and then you, then they'll be like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, your food has taken you around the world. The food that you love comes mm -hmm. from around the world. You've always talked about how food can connect us as human beings. Yeah. And now you've taken on uh, a, a new uh, role as, as an ACLU ambassador, which is really amazing. You're focusing on immigration and women's reprodu reproductive rights. Yes. Th these, these are really uh, powerful issues that are close to your heart. And you travel speaking about that, and now you're going to be taking on that role. What, what is your goal? What do you hope to achieve in, in this role? Well, I've been working with the ACLU in this capacity for three years. But, I mean, now I'm also starting to work with the UN. So it, the Goodwill Ambassadorship is a direct outcome, I think, of working with the ACLU and speaking out about immigration. It's, a issue that, it's an issue that's very close to my heart. Right. You know, I'm an immigrant. I really came here with my mother, much like these people at the border, yes. with hardly anything. And what you have to understand is that if a parent takes a child on a dangerous journey, puts them on their back, is willing to walk across deserts, that's because the place they're leaving is worse and more dangerous. And I just think we have plenty to share. And if you look at all the contributions that immigrants have made, you're basically looking at what America is today, in whole, full stop. The, um... There's no crisis. There's no crisis. The only crisis is that we have a lunatic with a lot of power. <laughs> that, is the, that is the only crisis. He also eats his steak well done, just so you know. <laughs> I'm I mean, not surprised. Not that you needed another reason to <laughs> probably, call him a lunatic, but yes. Probably with ketchup as well. Oh, yes, he does. <laughs> really? No, yes. No, that, I, oh, you, don't, you didn't know that? I'm trying not to pay attention to No, him really. So much. He eats his steak well done with ketchup. For real. Really? That's a real, yeah. real thing that the president does. Yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> Um, before I let you go, let, let's talk a little bit about some other causes that are close to your heart. Mm -hmm. One of the genuinely, um, it was, it was provocative, heartbreaking, and brave moments that I, that I witnessed was, um, when you came out, and it was really tied to the Me Too movement in and around the Brett Kavanaugh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the confirmation hearings. You, you, you wrote an op-ed in the New York Times talking about your Me Too story, your mm -hmm. story of, of being ashamed to come out and your having to face, you know, what many women face in mm -hmm. the world. Why do you think it's so important to share those stories now? And what do you think we could be doing better to enable other women to tell those stories to try and eradicate the scourge of what the Me Too movement is fighting against? I think we really have to support our victims. Whether, you know, they wind up being... the perpetrator winds up being guilty or not, it doesn't matter. You know, there's... I don't know any person, any woman, who would come forward and, and say, I... you know, this happened to me, if it wasn't true. Because the trauma that you go through after you report is quite substantial. And I had nothing to gain and even more pain you know, to experience if I had spoken up at 16. Right. And I think if I had been in a different climate, I would have felt able to come out. And I had every sign from um, all around me that I shouldn't speak up. But now I'm in a different moment in my life. I'm at peace, I'm serene, I'm strong, I'm not a child. And the world is different. And so I have to act accordingly. I hope that me speaking about it, even though uh, the outcome of that hearing was as, it, as we know, mm -hmm. I hope that other young women will be able to come out. I hope we will be able to take the shame out of it. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, I wanted to speak about it because I think there are millions of women like me who never reported. And it's not because it wasn't so bad. It's because it was so bad. That's why. Right. Thank you again so much for being on the show. Wonderful having you. The season finale of Top Chef airs March 14th at 9.30 p.m. on Bravo. Padma Lashmi, everybody.